Hello, I'm Grover Silcox, and welcome to Boundless, where we give voice to Good Shepherd Rehabilitation's patients and their families. You'll hear the compelling real-life stories of folks who have braved the trials, triumphs, and tribulations of rehabilitation and the boundless possibilities that lie on the other side of that journey. It is a pleasure to welcome my guest today, Gus Sabini. Gus, how are you? Good. Thank you. So thankful for you to be here. Gus, you sustained a spinal cord injury, uh, and you were in Good Shepherd's inpatient hospital in Center Valley, and now you're an outpatient and working out at Good Shepherd's Optimal Fitness Gym. Is that right? Right. Uh-huh. So tell us a little bit about yourself and, um, and the injury and how it led you to Good Shepherd. All right. First of all, thanks for having me in here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Um, six months ago, I was closing my store. It's a small mini market. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I fall down. My, I cannot stand up. I was trying my best to stand up again. I made it. Then I kind of closed the register and count the money. And, you know, then I start to feel like all oh, my legs numb. It's not carrying me anymore. So what happened, I just put everything on the back, I locked the door, put the alarm, and I drove home. My home, it's like two minutes from my house. Right. Do you live right. in the valley yes. here? Yes, yes, in, mm -hmm. in Whitehall. So I got home, but before I got home, I start to feel like I cannot put my leg on the brake. I'm not controlling nothing. Wow. That's got to be a little yes. scary. Yes, but it's like short distance because my house mm -hmm. is like close to the sewer. Right. I parked my car and I went to my house inside. I reached the sunroom where's all the family. Then I dropped myself on the recliner. After that, I cannot move and I don't know what exactly is going on. My sister called the ambulance. They came. They took me to sound looks for like seven, eight days, nine days. First couple days, I thought it's something small. I'm going to take some medicine or watever, and I will be home. I will continue right. my normal life. You're already thinking this is just a little hiccup. Yeah, because most of the doctors over there, they been telling me after the MRI and the blood work and all of that, they told me that uh, it looked like your immune system attacking itself. Really? All right, okay. Then... More doctors came, mm -hmm. more professionals. Uh, in the end, on the day six or seventh, they saw something on the pictures on the MRI that there's something on the spine on T10. Really? So they asked to do it again. Mm -hmm. I went down. They have it. Then they said, we need another surgery tomorrow morning. They're going to go inside on the camera to see what exactly is this. Right, to get a better look. Yes, to take a better look. And they found that there's a blood clot on T10. After that, they put me in medicine. And we was talking what's the best and for later on, you know. Right. And when you talk to the doctors... It was the hard part on St. Luke's, special with the doctors who do the surgery and who are going to follow up. Um, you're still young, 42 years old, and mm -hmm. you're not moving on the bed. Right. It's hard, and they come and tell you right away in front of your face, like, Gus, we wish you the best luck. Um, you go into the inside patient, to the good shepherd, they accept you, this and that. But I was asking the doctor, like, where you see me going? Like, where am I going to move my leg? When I'm going to walk back again? Right, of course. Like, uh, this afternoon, I was playing with my kids on my yard. Right, you have two, was, two boys? Two boys, and yeah. I was carrying them on my shoulders, and I was running, and I was right. fighting with them on the grass. Like, what's going on? Uh, I'm sorry to say that I heard the worst sentence I ever heard in my life. He said, hopefully you can make it, but I'm so sorry maybe most of your life is going to be in wheelchair. And if you made it later on, after a year or so, because you're young, you're going to be on walker. Wow. I told her I'm not going to be able to go back 
to the, my normal life? He said, I don't think so. I'm sorry. Wow. So another day or two, I left. I went to the Good Shepherd. And, you know, the first week, it's still hard on me. Right. It's still so hard. Even that, psychologically. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's, it's hard to take it. It's right. hard to think about it. Because like, you, were, you were in construction. You had physical jobs. You're, you're, Even you know, if you're going to be a bodybuilder. An, an athletic, you're, <laughs> no you matter what, athletic. No matter what you do, yes. no matter what. It's, it's, it's hard. hard. It's hard to take it. Yes. It's hard to take it. Like, uh, you have nothing to do. You cry and you pray. Right. This is the only two things. And because you're 100% cannot move. Right. You can move it's your It's out head. of your hands yes. in a way. Yes. So you only keep praying. And that night when there's nobody next to you because you're a man, you cry. Right. That's it. Right. You start, they put you on the plan for the therapy. And you start day by day, you start to meet new people, new patients. You start to work with the therapist every day with somebody else. Right. You interact and with the physicians and yes, the nurses yes, yes, and the therapists. Yes, yes. Right. Uh, another week or 10 days, you start to feel like one of your legs start kicking out, you know? It's mm -hmm. moving. Something is there. That must give you tremendous hope. The hope was there because I'm a grateful. First, the God always feel it next to me, feel like always He's Jesus is you. next to me. Yeah. I'm grateful for having um, families, my wonderful wife and uh, my kids. Right. They give me the power all the time. But the most hard job is the nurses and the therapists. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of patience to deal with the people, with the, with the patient. Right. So they are like, those people, I give them the credit. Yeah. The most credit for them. Right. Plus, they always have the beautiful word on, come out from the mouth. They always give you the push. They always right. have the, the positive mentality. Right. They always give you that guts. Don't think about it. It's hard. Just go. Do it. Right. Do it. Mm -hmm. And you will do it. Day after day, after week, after week, you feel yourself. There's something start move. You're getting better a little bit. Right. This exercise, I couldn't do it the, today. After two, three days, I start to do it. So it's all about keep exercising. It's about... It's the good things about the therapist when they motivated you. Right. When they always give you the beautiful words that... Motivate you. They motivate you to the max, and they tell you right. that we trust you. You will do it. When people give you that trust and give you that push and give right. you that beautiful mentality, too, like... Everything all together, um, you're going to get stronger no matter what. Right. You know, Good Shepherd has, you know, some of the, the most sophisticated technology and equipment and, the, you know, the doctors and yes. the clinicians and the nurses. Yes. And, but but the, that doesn't mean anything unless those, the people you're working with, the professionals. The most important things. Have that, a relationship with you. Yes. The most important things, first of all. You should have the will. Yes. You should be, you should get strong. You should be strong from inside you, here. Right, in your head. And the good things that after two, three weeks, when you start to build that relationship with your therapist, one or two or three, and you guys become a good friend. Mm -hmm. They come to your room, they ask what, what you're doing, and like, you start to feel like, they are my friend. They are my family, not just my friend, because I'm an inside patient. I'm seeing them every single day for hours. Right. I'm there seven days a week. I know Saturday, Sunday's off, but I'm seeing them. And sometimes they work on me on Sunday, too. So those people, it's hard for me to forget them. Right. Uh, I don't know if I should 
mention names, but I work with all of them. All of them is great people. The OT or the PT. Maybe I forget some names. I'm, I'm gonna say sorry, but I love all of them. I respect right. all of them. I think you gave it a blanket. To thank yeah, you yeah, there. but yeah. you know, but the OT I can remember. Um, no Noreen, Julia, uh, Sam, they are wonderful people. BT, um, Albert, uh, Amanda, Samantha, but I stuck uh, Jasmine, and Jasmine, they move her to South Fifth Street, so I see her right now. <laughs> Since I get injured, I saw Jasmine every day. Um, the main one I stuck with her, um, Amanda, and she always. Every couple of days, you tell me, like, Gus, I'm going to give you a wild idea. Are you ready? <laughs> I said, I'm ready. And I spent a beautiful five weeks over there. Um, I get more uh, more movement. I start to... Right. I know I left on a wheelchair and a walker, but since I get there, I always keep telling Dr. Sain, because I see him every day. Dr. Sain, keep me here as much as you can. He asked me why. Patients want to leave and you want to stay here? <laughs> I, I tell him, listen, it's hard for me to leave and go home on wheelchair, at least a walker. Right. It's so hard. Anytime my kids come in here, they kick my wheelchair and they want to grab my <laughs> hand and they tell me, dad, you can do it. Let's go home. Right. How old are the boys? Four years and six years. Wow. So that those boys, they give me a lot of push, especially when I was in Center Valley, Good Shepherd. Right. Because all, every weekend they come to me, and every weekend when they see me on the wheelchair, they don't want to be that much close to me. Mm -hmm. If they give me a hug, they stay like this. Yeah, they're a little reserved. Yes, and the little boy, he always say, let's go home. You can do it. <laughs> and he want to grab my hand. So this is a challenge, man. This is the challenge, and thanks, Lord. I'm a, I'm a grateful that I reached that point after almost six months right now. Wow, that's terrific. And yeah. I know you said your wife was very uh, supportive. She slept with me every night. Wow. Yes. And, uh, and what's her name? Uh, Mariana. Ah, Mariana. Yes, yes. And in uh, South Fifth Street, Always when you see other patients' problem, sometimes you pray for them before yourself. Right. Okay? But at the same time, you see those people, how they are struggling, and you see yourself, you're moving forward maybe more than them. Mm -hmm. Okay? But at the same time, you don't forget how much I'm working hard. I never forget how much I'm working hard. I have a five days a week, two hours, but most of the days... I hit the gym on the first floor and I work by myself wow. just because I want to push myself another forward. I want to be like, I want to get back to my normal life. I want to get back to my kids. I want to do the same what I used to do with them. I right. want to carry them on my shoulders. It's right. hard right now, but it's a hope, you know, yeah, it's a dream. Yeah, sure. It's a sure. dream and how, hopefully I'll make it. Yeah. How long has... Have you been in rehab now altogether? Right I think now, you may have mentioned it. Uh, almost six months. Six months. Almost. Right. I'm and, not going to say five and a half. And when did the incident occur? When was that? Um, October. And the end of October 2023. 23. So yes. recently. Recently. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You, and this is all a recent experience. This whole thing has turned around. And how old are you now, Gus? 42. I'm going to be 42. 43 in August. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well... Uh, what would you say are the biggest challenges if you had to give advice to someone else starting out like this? Well, the biggest challenge is sometimes it's hard to... I guess there are so many challenges to pinpoint one or two can be difficult. Yes, yes. The biggest challenge, I said, I wrote something, it's a note just to remember it. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you can read it. Look into my kids and knowing that helpless and I cannot be with them 
playing, running, doing all the stuff that I used to be right. doing with before. Got it. That was the most challenging. Yeah. This is what I always keep praying for that. Right. So I think it's really what you have said all along, yep. which is staying focused, staying positive, and having faith that all sure. this will work out. 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. Even with the South Fifth Street Good Shepherd, you guys have an amazing therapist over there. Always when you keep meeting or dealing or working with positive people, they always have the nice work coming out. Right. They always give you the credit for what you're doing, that you're doing more than what they are expecting. Right, right. You want, always, and you want them to push. Honestly, it's, it gives you the push. Mm -hmm. When you always hear that, it's hard to say, but let me tell you something. When you're going to be disabled and every week and every month you're doing something you couldn't do it before and somebody talking to you in that way, sometimes you feel yourself you're a hero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're not a hero. You're normal. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting, you're trying your best to getting back to normal way. Right. But they talk to you in a way that you're doing more than what, like, more than what we, we are expecting from us. From right. You. Okay. Right. And uh, all the guys in, in South Fifth Street, same as right. inside patient therapy, they are amazing. My therapist right now, his name is Kylie. Um, I'm stuck with her five days a week. <laughs> PT. <laughs> and uh, all of them amazing. And all of them, even the, the, the therapist, I don't work with them. They mm -hmm. know me. Right. Okay. And we always make a joke. We always, hi, what you doing? We always talk, you know. They all, even if they pass from, they, if they pass me, they stop and they say, Gus, you look good. How are you doing? We're seeing you. You, you. you reach the cane. Oh, that's beautiful. Keep it up, you know. Even those therapists, you don't work with them, they start to know you. Right. They start to know your name. They talk to you. They give you the push. They give you the nice word ever, you know. Uh, I told you, Jasmine, I saw her inside in Center Valley, and right, how, right now she's in, in South Fifth Street, Good Shepherd. Uh, the OT, amazing people, Gwen, Delilah, uh, Dan, he's a gentleman. <laughs> like, all of them, all of them, it's my family right now. Right. Like, the day I'm going to be discharged, mm -hmm. um, people... I think most of the patients going to be happy when the day going to hit that day when they're going to ring the bell that we're discharged. <laughs> For me, I think I'm going to cry. I got, I'm not going to be that happy because I get used to see all, all right. this They're family. You yes, they are it. my family. Yeah, Honestly, family. they are my family. So you went from wheelchair to cane, and that's where you're at now. I went from... Zero percent debt. Nothing. Nothing right. moving. Lower Nothing. extremities. When I left the Center Valley Good Chopper, they left because they teach you how to be independent. They right. teach you how to, to move from the bed to the wheelchair and the gym, how you exercise. When mm -hmm. you're going to be independent, that means you're ready to go home. Then you continue on the other facility. Right. Uh, my goal... I told Dr. Sain about it, and I did it before I left Center Valley. I did it that I asked them, can you get me the wheelchair? I asked my therapist, can you get me the wheelchair? Most of them, they said it's too early. I said, yeah, but I need it right now because I still have one week. I need it because I'm going home on the wheelchair, not on the walker. Uh, I'm going home with the walker. The wheelchair... You guys told me it's going to be with me for temporary time. I accept it. But right. the, the time I will reach home and everybody's waiting for me, my kids waiting for me, I don't want my wife to go back to the trunk and bring the wheelchair and put it next to the, right. the car door. Right. I want the walker. Right. And I did it because I have the will and 
all the people around me, sorry, was supporting me to the max. Right. Family, friend, therapist. No one left me alone. Everybody was next to me all the time. Right. Everybody had your back. Yes. And supported you. Yes. And still do. I'm, I'm grateful from therapist, good shepherd, Dr. Sain, uh, friends, family, my wife, kids, everyone. Well, Gus, I want to tell you, we're thankful that you're here sharing your story with us today. Thank you. Thanks so much. And best of luck. Keep on, keep on doing what you're doing because you have a great story to tell and it Dr. looks like Sain, it's only getting better. Thank you. Dr. Sain, I, I had an appointment with him this noon and he told me in six months, you did more than great. You, in six, on less than six months, you hit the 75%, which is no one was expecting that. Wow. Another six months, um, I wish you're gonna hit the 90. I told him right away, the answer was ready. Another six months, I will not gonna agree for the 95, I want more. <laughs> All right, well, the, the title of your story, Gus, is Exceeding Expectations. Sure. Thanks so much for being Thank with you. us. Thank you. Gus Sabini, we want to thank you for joining us and thank you for tuning in. We appreciate your support. Check in with us next time for another episode of Boundless and more personal stories of perseverance, health, and wellness from Good Shepherd Rehabilitation. Rehabilitation.